Hello there, Sir from 17 once again, and this is me introducing you to my E3 impressions. So what I'm going to be doing on these videos is I'm going to be going over some of the stuff that's been shown in the press conferences. I'm going to go over each of the press conferences, tell you what I liked, tell you what I didn't like, go through them and update some people that might not have been paying attention, might not really care, or just people that are interested in if I share the same opinions that they do, because... As we know, there's been a hell of a lot of stuff announced, and it's a really exciting moment to be a gamer. So the first press conference I'm going to cover is the Microsoft one. And it's not because I'm a fanboy or anything like that, it's just literally, it's the one that I found first when it came to the lineup, and it was the first one I watched. So, I don't know if you saw Microsoft press conference last year, but it was, I believe, if my memory serves, very Kinect focused because this was the year where the Kinect was supposed to really prove itself and you'll notice it kind of didn't because like as I've been saying from the beginning it's a fucking worthless bag of shit and everybody's got over that soccer fever or the sorry that the soccer mum fever that happened with the Wii when all the bloody wives and all the missuses picked it up to try and lose some fucking weight and it was just this massive bloody novelty because everybody were playing it from the grandma and stuff and I just never really got on board with that whole Wii mentality yet Microsoft and Sony both saw them selling all those fucking copies and they're like, we need to do that shit. So I can be glad to announce that the Kinect didn't really have a massive showing at this press conference, thank God. There is a couple of stuff that's, that's gone down that I, I don't really give the flying fuck about, but I'll probably get through that. So the first thing that they showed, which I surprised the hell out of me, was Halo 4. So a lot of people don't really know my opinion on Halo because I generally don't bring it up too much. And the reason I don't bring it up too much is because I don't like it. I have never liked Halo. I'm not one of those people that enjoys hating on it because it's popular or anything like that. It's just, I played Halo 1 before it came out and I played it before everybody else told me it was good. So I got my own opinion on it and my opinion was it was a very nice looking first person shooter that didn't really do anything more impressive than the ones I'd played before. So to me, it was just shooting uninteresting looking aliens and it just never really took off like it did for everybody else. And uh, this is the fourth installment of the series and it's been handled by a new team because Bungie have backed out. It's, they've run the course and now we've got the, the new studio there on it and the trailer that they showed opened up with FMV so I was kind of thinking like motherfuckers we're not going to be able to see shit here it's just going to be this pre-rendered trailer and then at the end it's going to be like Halo oh, and all those humming and shit and those silly songs but no completely different not only was the FMV at the start absolutely fantastic, as it showed these these captain of this ship, this this big crew of people that had turned this warship from something that was there to destroy into something that was there to benefit the human race, and then everything goes wrong. And then this ship starts to crash down onto this planet, and lo and behold, stood on this planet as the ship's coming in, is good old, you know, giant green robot guy, Mr. Spartan dude. And it was a pretty cool moment watching the ship come down. And from there, it leads directly into gameplay, where you, you're the chief once again. You've got a new looking battle rifle. It's got a different looking scope, and you know, same weapon but different aesthetic on it because it's all updated and everything. And he's moving through a jungle, and it all looks pretty nice, pretty cool. And um, he sees a bunch of common uh, covenant, and he he starts to take them on, and suddenly they get killed by something. And there's there's this whole epiphany that happens throughout this, the rest of the demo, where this new enemy starts attacking him, and I thought it looked fucking awesome, this enemy. It kind of got really close to him, knocked him on his ass, and pulled its face off, and underneath was Ghost Rider smiling, and I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, Tron, Ghost Rider, you smile. And it was just it was just really cool to see, and then there's the whole foreigner weapons that assemble themselves, and just a whole bunch of really, really nice things happening, and... I'm not the biggest, like I say, I'm not the biggest appreciation for the series, so it's not something that's going to immediately get me an erection, but just seeing this new enemy knock the, the chief on his ass and be like, you know, put this motherfucker down, was enough to be like, I wonder where this story's going to go, I wonder how, what's going to come about it, and I hope it's really, really cool, because from the looks, it looks pretty great, so I am stoked for a Halo game, and this is the first time in my life that I ever have been, so... A really cool way to start it, I thought, as far as the press conference goes, but... 
I don't really know much more details because I don't know all the Halo, like, fucking niches and storyline things. And when there's, like, you know, a new enemy that has been waiting and there's some voice just kind of doing the whole, I have been waiting. I, I don't get any of that. That could be, you know, there could be people sitting around analyzing this video going, oh, that's the voice of the fucking grave mind. That's the voice of, you know, that silly blue bitch or that little tiny Wheatley guy. And it's like, no, that's not me. For all I know, it could be one of those fucking downy aliens that run around just going, run away like worms and I'm just not interested but Halo 4 very cool I was impressed so the list that I've got here states that the next thing on the press conference which I can't remember if this is true was Splinter Cell Blacklist and uh, yeah this is a I'm using a website who's gone through his, his feelings of the, the press conferences so if this is in the wrong order I do apologize but it's refreshing my memory on the games anyhow so I'm a massive Splinter Cell fan, I was, you know, when it first came out and everybody kind of went, oh, it's just trying to be Metal Gear Solid, I was one of the only people that I knew that was like, whoa, what's wrong with more Metal Gear Solid, I like stealth games, give me more of that, and I've stuck with the series pretty much throughout every game, I've played every single one of them, and I've liked pretty much all of them, but I did think Conviction was far too action heavy and moved away from the game that I loved. And my biggest problem with this most recent one is it looks like, you know, Chaos Theory slash Double Agent, he's got his suit back, he's, he's in a Middle Eastern country, he's doing his stealth business and that, but it seems to still have the action focus. But there was one thing said by the producer that gave me a lot of faith, because watching this demo, Sam takes out one guy and then shoots the rest of the people in the crowd and just runs off, and now he can climb everything like fucking Altair, and I just, I don't know, it seems too much it seems like it's just run and gun now and that is not why i play splinter cell but as i mentioned there's something that really really impressed me by the the guy that was speaking saying you can now customize sam's entire equipment and his his, his suit effectively so you're going to be able to put on things that will affect his performance in mission and one of the things that he said was you can either go towards an action outcome of buffing him up giving him more armor and things maybe carrying more ammunition or focusing him towards stealth so maybe, and I, I, I phrase this maybe with a hell of a lot of hope, we'll be able to stealth our way through the game. Because there were levels on conviction, you couldn't do that. You had to shoot people. And I want to be able to go from the start of this game till the end without anybody ever knowing I was there. That is how I like to play Splinter Cell. And if that is not back, I will be almost as pissed off as I was when I did not hear Michael Ironside in the fucking trailer. And... I was immediately, I was. you check my tweets, I was already like, no Michael Ironside, no dice, this is not Splinter Cell, how dare you Ubisoft, shame on you. But I also read somewhere else on the internet that on the previous E3 when Conviction was there, they didn't have Michael Ironside on the game either, and he came in later on. And uh, I don't know if you've ever played Double Agent, but at the start there's a really fucking funny cinematic where it isn't Michael Ironside who's the voice of one of the characters, it's somebody else, and it just sounds really stupid. Finish your mission, Sam. It's a really funny moment if you've ever watched it out of context. But it looks promising. It's I like Splinter Cell. I always have. I just don't like how they tried to turn him into Jason Bourne. And I'm hoping it goes back to what I enjoyed. Who knows? It wasn't enough to be able to really tell. Uh, not too sure why it's going back into, you know, some sandy, random, you know, eastern, east, mid... Middle East, sorry, environment, because we've seen a lot of that, and especially with Medal of Honor coming back with full strength and everything looking like it's in Afghanistan. As gamers, I don't think we kind of want more of that look, but it'll probably go across the world, so who knows. But the next big thing, really, was the EA Sports that they introduced. They did a bunch of stuff about the NFL and a couple of stuff with the FIFA, and if I'm completely honest, I couldn't give a fucking piece of turd i really couldn't couldn't pass the parcel around to get this into my brain to even have any kind of real opinion on it i used to be madly into fifa but i used to be madly into football and i lost that as i matured and same with the the sports games they're just not my thing and that is connect obsessed to that one so fuck that one uh, the next big one on on this list is fable the journey so uh, if I'm honest, I didn't really watch much of Fable The Journey because I think it was just a cinematic trailer. It was just a bunch of connect bullshit of some guy pretending to he was fucking Goku firing Kamehamehas. And then the screen showed a bunch of like Boverines and all the stupid retarded enemies that have been in every single one of the Fable games getting killed by magic. And if I wanted to be Harry Potter, I'd, you know, shoot myself because Harry Potter's gay. But I didn't get it. I'm not interested. And uh, fuck that shit. So the next one's going to be an interesting one, Gears of War Judgment. 
And I don't know if anybody else is similar to me, but I was not expecting another Gears of War. Like, Gears of War 3 ended, and don't get me wrong, I assumed they'd probably make another one in a couple of years, but I thought they'd at least leave it a while. I did not expect this. So the, the big things to bear in mind here, it isn't being, you know, designed and developed by Epic, although they will have, you know, Rod Ferguson in there doing his thing, making sure that everything turns out like an Epic game should. Instead, they're using the people that created Bulletstorm, the... You know, people can fly team, and I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. It's just Gears is a franchise that everybody knows and loves, and giving it to a developer that I don't quite think are up to the same level that Epic are could be either a risk. There is two ways that this can turn out. It can be amazing because they bring a whole new edge of craziness to the Gears series and it's completely different to what we expect. Or they make a subpar Gears of War clone in Gears of War's clothing. And that would really suck. But I do have faith in both companies and I do have faith in Rod Ferguson. So it could be pretty interesting. But I've got to say, folks, I don't give a fuck about Bird. I really don't. I really liked him on Gears of War 1, but the more I got to know him through Gears of War 2 and 3, the less interesting he became. And I don't really think that that is the best direction they could have gone. And we don't know how far into the past this is going to go. For all we know, it could be Quentin Tarantino and it could be jumping all over the place. But I would have preferred the Pendulum Wars, you know, back in the old times or something, when they were warring between Russia or the different factions on the planet before the Locust turned up. I, I would have preferred, you know, maybe playing as... Marcus Phoenix's dad. Oh, I, d I don't know, it's just... It's such a strange choice to me. And... It did not impress. And the biggest thing that didn't impress is they didn't show fucking gameplay. It's like there's a really, really quick trailer of somebody being in handcuffs and then a bit of shooting. And then they're showing this multiplayer mode, which, to me, just is, is fucking robbery. It's just slapping us in his face. Because what they've done is they've taken something that was a game mode in previous Gears of Wars that they intentionally locked off from player versus player. And now they're reintroducing it like it's something new with player versus player. It's like, it's beast mode against humans. Something that was asked at, at last E3, and they were like, no, we're not doing that. And the reason why? So they can fucking sell it as again. And that is gay. That is really gay. And I use gay as a euphemism for anything bad. And it's not me attacking the gays. Gays are nice people. But it's fucking gay. Really gay. And the next one on this list, and I don't think this is all the press conference because I can remember more bullshit in between this, is Forza Horizon. And I've got to say, folks, when that trailer hit, I had to suppress the biggest fucking jaw-breaking yawn. This... <laughs> I don't get it. Don't get racing games. Don't get driving games. Oh, let's make a driving game so realistic, you're practically in a car. Why not get a fucking car if you want to play a realistic game? I mean, play a real life in a car. That way you might actually pick up some pussy. It's just stupid. Fucking stupid. Right. This one did impress. Tomb Raider. So, my history with Tomb Raider is, is, is a long and extensive one. I played all the early ones and hated all the most recent ones. And if I'm honest, I never really liked the old ones. I just played them and they scared me so I could never get very far. And they were pretty difficult and the controls were garbage and all that good stuff. But I respected them. And when I've been watching a lot of the trailers for this new one, there's all the comment sections that are alive with, oh, it's just trying to be Uncharted, it's just trying to be this. And I just sit there holding my tongue just thinking, are you guys fucking retarded? If it wasn't for Tomb Raider, we wouldn't have Uncharted. This is the game that practically built the foundation for this type of game. And don't get me wrong, if it wasn't for Indiana Jones, we probably wouldn't have Tomb Raider, but you've got to respect where it came from, guys. You can't just be like, oh, it's trying to be this when that thing exists because of Tomb Raider. It's... <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like porno does not exist because we have sexual feelings. Sexual feelings exist because we're human and thus porno is created. It's ridiculous. It's the chicken and the egg. But this demo, I was a little bit surprised because they've changed how Lara looked from the last one. I don't know if you remember the last E3, but they showed her getting fucked up and like healing wounds and having sticks stabbed in her and stuff. She was getting like really abused in her adventure. And I thought her face and her hair and everything looked awesome, but... They've changed it now to a more, more you know, orthodox Lara with a ponytail and stuff, and I, and I really preferred the other look, but that aside, this game looks terrific. I've never really been interested in the future Tomb Raiders, but they're bringing it back to its roots. It's more about survival. You can hunt on it to eat and things, and it just, it just looks 
really, really interesting, and I don't know how it'll translate throughout an entire game, because what they showed was so scripted, man. If they'd have gone even remotely a different situation, that could have all come crashing down. Like, they were setting things on fire that were killing numerous enemies, and a lot of stuff like that, and it makes me wonder if they can keep that kind of, you know, pace and that kind of diversity up throughout a full game. It'll be really fantastic. And anybody that did watch it pretty closely will know it's also joining, you know, my favourite aesthetic of this generation of consoles, and that is the artefacts on the screen. So when it's raining and she looks up into the camera, you're going to see the, the rain artifacts and the blooming on the on the screen, which looks awesome. And when she's been shot at in cover, it does the same with dirt. And it, it's just, everything's looking more polished because they've got an extra year to, you know, get that little bit more power out of the consoles. And it's looking really, really fine-tuned. So definitely one to watch. And just like pretty much every game at E3 now, you can use a bow and arrow. So anybody that, you know, has always wanted to be Rambo from Rambo 2 with the fucking tech bow, or even like the Turok games... Just, you're going to get some real love from bows this year because they're in everything. But the next title on here is Ascend New Gods, which is from the Toy Soldiers developers. And I don't really get it. I think it's going to be an arcade game, but I'm not too sure. And it showed this dude beating up on some other dudes, and it kind of just screamed, you know, low budget, small team trying to make a God of War clone. And uh, I'm not going to condemn it before it comes out because it could be fantastic, but it just. It looked like somebody would seen God of War and, you know, wanted to make one. And I don't know how well that's going to go down, because we all know Dante's Inferno tried that, and it had a fantastic aesthetic, but the game itself was very poor. Very playable, but poor compared to God of War. And uh, next on this list, we've got Loco Cycle. And I'm not too sure what that is, but I think it's that where, it, where it, that Tron bike turned up. And it was like, there is an assassin in the future. She's fucking awesome in every way. And then it just panned out and it was a bike. Like something out of Extreme G. And I, I, I probably skipped it at that point because it was preposterous and stupid. But the next one is, is something called Matter. Which you just can't help but see. Like when it, when it came on, I didn't really know what I was watching. It was a cross between Marble Madness, uh, you know, Super Monkey Ball and Tron. And then towards the end, you're just thinking... These guys have seen Portal. These guys must have really liked Portal and thought, yo guys, let's make a Portal, because that's all I could think. It looked really nice, but you can't get away from the trappings that this game is just, you know, stealing blatantly from a lot of other creative sources, and it could be a fantastic game, but just from this, it's hard to get excited at something that has fucking companion cubes in it. It's like, come on guys, we've seen this. <laughs> Do something new. But... It could be fantastic, and I don't really know much about it, so I'm, I'm not going to shit on it, because uh, it's not my place, really. That leads us swiftly into Resident Evil 6 that came through. And I'm a, I consider myself a bit of a Resident Evil fan. I've played a lot of them. I've played, pretty, I've played all of them. I say I've played a lot of them. And I've enjoyed most of them. I, I think the biggest problem with Resident Evil is a lot of people have an affinity for the older games. And... I did enjoy the survival horror ones, I did enjoy, you know, the fixed cameras and the inventory management and all that great stuff, but I do think if people went back and played those games, they would not be as fun as they remember, because the controls were dog shit, the camera was dog shit, the inventory was dog shit, everything about these games was kind of crappy, it was a bad third person shooter that introduced us to the survival horror elements that made it a good game, because it was scary, it was tense, and it was all about management, but when it came to playing and shooting and aiming, it was fucking garbage, but because we remember it being this really tense, awesome experience, we think that these more recent games are moving away from that with this action direction, and they are intrinsically but at the same time they also have much better controls they play a lot smoother and they're a lot more enjoyable because of it so uh, i'm not going to condemn what resident evil 6 is doing even though it's it's really actioned up with the looks and i do believe the biggest problem that the resident evil series has right now is that resident evil 4 exists and i say that because resident evil 4 came out and made every resident evil before it look stupid and made every Resident Evil after it look like it was trying to be it, but just didn't succeed. Resi 4 is a fantastic game. It is one of the all-time best games that's been released in the last 20 years, by far. Because it did everything right, and it was so well. Resi 5 was a big disappointment for me, because they just... They didn't get it. They, they lost a lot of people with it. And this game... 
there is so much action in it. Like I've seen a, a Leon section where he's diving around and shooting, and there's thousands of zombies, and there's somebody with him, and it just he's taking cover, man. He's taking cover all the time, and I don't want cover in Resident Evil. I know it was in the fifth one, but I never used it because these games aren't about cover, and if I wanted that, I'd play Gears of War. And I don't really know what to think about that. The other clip I saw was even more action-based, and it had Chris in it. And it's, I can confirm that he's just as buff as he was before. His biceps have biceps. He's got He's that ripped. It's ridiculous. But... There was a really nice cutscene that we have absolutely no context about because there was music playing throughout it. And it was Chris in a bar drinking, for whatever reason, and this bar was, you know, it had a bunch of regulars sat in it and there was a guy next to him that kind of starts up a conversation. Uh, Chris gets told to leave uh, because he wants to drink and he kind of walks away and the guy comes up to him and says to him, you know, like, she told you to leave. And he goes to hit him with this bottle and this guy stops him and he notices that this guy's got the BSSA emblem on his arm, you know, of the old elite unit that Chris was a part of in, in Resi 5. And they have this conversation, and what I got from the conversation, because I actually really liked this cutscene, I thought it was a really cool moment, uh, I, I understood that this guy is, is must be trying to recruit Chris, telling him that there's some kind of emergency happening, and Chris, I think, says to him, you know, where's your team, who's your team type thing, and Everybody in this bar who you thought were just regulars stands up and forms an orderly like squad behind this character that's talking to Chris. And it's just one of those cool moments of like, we've, we've come for you, we need you, it's time to go, shit is kicking off. And that was cool, I liked that a lot. Um, but the gameplay was just him running around beating the fuck out of everything. And the humans were turning into like giant mothmen and it was just crazy and there was bullets flying everywhere, he had like a G36. From what I could see on the video, the life was regenerating, which is going to piss a lot of people off. The The inventory wasn't there anymore. He could bring it up dead space-like. It was real-time. There was not a menu for it. And I, I can't remember if he could move while he was shooting, but I bet he could. And it just... It looked like a departure to, to what a lot of people like, but at the same time, maybe it'll be more fun. Who knows? I'm interested, but it, was, <laughs> it wasn't it was jaw-dropping, I don't think. So there's... This website says the next thing is called Wreck Wreckateer, which is an intricate version of Angry Birds, and I don't think I saw that. I must have skipped over that part, so unfortunately I can't really mention much on that one. The the, the next one was South Park, the Stick of Truth, and <laughs> God, I love you know Trey Parker and Matt Stone. They came out onto the E3 stage completely unscripted and took the piss out of every single bit of PR nonsense that had come before them, and it was great. There was a bit of an awkward moment at the end where they were shooed off, but it was still pretty great. And they they showed the game, and the game looks like the best South Park game ever made. Even though that is not a bold statement, because I think we can all agree there's been some pretty shit South Park games. <laughs> but it looks like the show. It's been handled by Obsidian. It's got RPG elements, and just the the, the clip it's you know the little clips of of sound files and stuff that was happening was making me laugh. And South Park makes me laugh a lot. So if the game is making me laugh, I'm, I can't help but look forward to it. It could be amazing, and it was. Really, really good. Definitely check that one out if you haven't, because can't wait for whatever that game will be. But Dance Central 3 was another big one at the conference. They had Usher, who came out and did a song and dance. He sang live as well, which everybody was making a fuss about, but I don't really care about Usher. I don't really like his music at all. And um, I, I thought he was dead, if I'm honest. I, I was like, Usher? Who the fuck's that guy? Oh, that guy! The guy from, like, ten years ago. There he is. <laughs> Yeah, and he's not fat, which is surprising, because they generally come back fat, but the way he dances, I'm surprised that he's keeping any weight on him at all, because the guy was active. But Dance Central 3 is a funny subject for me, because it's a fantastic Kinect game that everybody that likes to dance likes that game, and it's, it's good for exercise and all that great stuff. But in three years, we've had three Dance Centrals, and nobody is even remotely mentioning Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero did it, and everyone hated him for it. Dance Central does it, everybody loves him, and that, to me, is the... Definition of hypocrisy. I like Guitar Hero, and to me, it just it feels like a piss in the face. It's like they've pissed on the hand and slapped me. It's 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 not cool, but who knows? Maybe they'll run that one into the ground and no one will care, and it'll just be me waiting for another Guitar Hero on my own because I hate rock band. <laughs> but according to this, we're on to the final thing that they showed, and I can't remember if Nintendo had anything different. But there are a lot of press conferences and a different developers which I will be covering. So the final one is Call of Duty Black Ops Two. So, 
Everybody on on the you know like game trailers comment section is shitting on this game, saying it looks like you know Call of Duty 4.5, just looks like the same old, same old, same old. And I watched this, and I enjoyed it. I thought it looked cool. I thought it looked fun. And to me, that is the most important part of it. It's a first-person shooter that is a, a a little bit of a different aesthetic to some of the other ones we've got right now. And it is Treyarch trying to prove themselves. And to me, that is a really big thing because we all know that Infinity Ward have been known as the, the, the A-team developer, but unfortunately they lost some members, a lot of people quit, there was the lawsuit and everything, so they were kind of not really the same company that made Modern Warfare 2. They brought out Modern Warfare 3, which is a good game, there's a lot of qualities that I like in it, but I think we can all agree it is nowhere near as good as Black Ops as a package or as a game. So now it's finally time for Treyarch to have the opportunity to really shine and really put their name out there as the top developer that Activision has in their Call of Duty franchise. And there is nothing better or, you know, more impressive than a dev team that is trying to prove something. A dev team that has an opportunity and is hungry to shine. And that is exactly what Treyarch have now. And the zombies is going to get better, the campaign's going to get better, the multiplayer is going to get better. They're going to be pushing so much into this game, it can't not be a fantastic game. And what they showed was interesting and cool. It wasn't the most impressive of, of demos they could have given, but we know that the game is going to have you know ridiculous set pieces. We know it's going to have the Call of Duty moments that everybody expects, and we know that zombies and multiplayer is going to be you know, ridiculously awesome for a lot of people, people that don't even touch the campaign. But as a package... I'm really excited because what they've shown is interesting and cool. I did have a couple of problems with it though. The, the first one I noticed, which I don't know if anybody else did, but the font on the user interface is the same as Crisis 2. And I know it's a future and it's it's got the whole future aesthetic going, but it looks really Crisis 2-y with, with the font itself. And immediately that throws me off a little bit. And then the first few guns that we've seen... And their iron sights kind of look like guns in Crisis 2. And I know that's in the future as well, so there's going to be, you know, some some similarities. But it's just, I don't know. I'm getting a big Crisis 2 vibe, and I didn't think I would, which kind of weirded me out. But the branching stuff looks great. The, the being able to use, you know, pull out and, and go into a more tactical perspective and choose your units and choose vehicles and stuff could be really interesting. And the thing that I like the most was the voice actors. So anybody that's you know pretty good with voice actors who watches a lot of anime or plays a lot of games, you'll notice some voices coming back and forth. And your main character is, is voiced by uh, a, a guy, I think it's, it's called Liam, and I never remember his surname. It's one of those names I've not committed to memory yet, but this is the guy who did the voice for War in Darksiders. He did the voice of uh, Azura in Azura's Wrath, and he also did the voice of Chaos Ballard in Final Fantasy XIII too. He is the voice of your character, and he's a fantastic voice actor. He's got a really commanding voice, and I like it a lot. And the guy that's backing him up, the, the Woods equivalent of this game, is another person whose name I don't commit to memory, but I should because he's a fucking awesome actor. If you've been watching The Walking Dead, he was the guy in the first season who was trapped on the roof, handcuffed and cut off his own arm. He's also in a ton of movies. Uh, my, one of my favourite performances from him is in Cliffhanger, when he's running up the cliff and Frank's, you know, approaching him, the chopper pilot, and he's like, Frank! Frank! No! And he, and he ends up getting gunned down. And then he does the awesome line that I always quote to one of my buddies from the, the Time Cop crew, where he does the whole, That man never hurt anybody! And he's all crying. And then there's the dude who's the English guy who's overly English in the movie, who's constantly on about soccer. And if I'm going to drop a little trivia here for you people, the guy who is the actor in that, who's always on about soccer, he's the person who voices Ghost and the person who voices Gav in, um, in Call of Duty. He is the English guy in pretty much all of the Call of Duty games. So whenever you've heard, you know, capture the objectives, headquarters, and all that good stuff, that is him. And in that game, he's just like, I love soccer, it's fucking great. And that's all he does all the way through, talk about soccer for some reason. But that's Cliffhanger, it's awesome, if you've not seen it, check it out. But yeah, voice actor's great. There's even Jennifer Hale in there, who is the voice of, you know, everything, everyone from Naomi to the female Shepherd and stuff. There's a lot of good voice talent, and... It's, the storyline's been written by the guy, I think, that did the script for Dark Knight, so maybe it will have a decent campaign with a decent storyline and some, some really, you know, cool moments. Uh, I'm excited. But all in all, Microsoft press conference could have had more games, it could have had more exclusives and new games, but we're in a real strange moment right now where 
the still clinging to this generation while still trying to make footsteps towards the next the next set of consoles so nobody is really you know ballsy enough to commit to anything that isn't really a sequel like none of this is 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 mind blowing because we're still in that process of figuring out the the, the tech for the new consoles and making those you know those those launch titles so it's a safe e3 for microsoft but i enjoyed it and uh, Hopefully you enjoyed this this little rant of mine. I know it's been pretty long, but the rest will be equally as long because there's a lot of good stuff at this show, guys. I ain't even got into some of the stuff I was most impressed with, but the next one's going to be, I'm not too sure, but I'm going to cover all of them. So thanks for watching or listening, and you take care now.